In this video, I'll be repairing the upper reed for a Linotype Model 5 line caster. These machines are now commercially obsolete, but through much of the 20th century, they were used for setting type for printing, especially for publications like newspapers. They cast an entire line of type as a single piece, substantially increasing speed of production as compared to setting individual letters of type. The Linotype typically contained 90 of these push rods, which rise from the operator's keyboard to the top of the machine, where they operate an escapement mechanism to release a matrix, which determines the shape of the letter. Each read operates one channel in the matrix magazine to release a particular letter. The keyboard itself also contains short lower reads, which raise the upper reads to release a matrix. The keyboard is mounted on a vertical pivot so it can be swung out for servicing, but if, due to a keyboard jam, one or more of the lower reeds is stuck in the raised position when the keyboard is swung out, they will strike the lower ends of nearby upper reeds. This can cause either the upper or lower reeds to be bent or broken off, or it can damage the comb that keeps the reeds lined up properly. The lower reeds are soft enough steel that they can generally be bent back to their proper shape, but the upper reeds are hardened steel and so will break off rather than bend back. This is what happened to the reed at the top of this photo. The spacing of the keyboard reeds and of the channels in the matrix magazine do not match, so the reeds need a slight sideways S-bend to them, and this bend is not the same for all the reeds. The photo shows the broken reed as part number H4582, while the intact one from the next channel is H4581. Altogether, there are perhaps 15 to 20 different part numbers with different degrees of S-bend. To avoid having to consult a parts manual when replacing the reeds, they are also stamped with the channel numbers they belong in. These are the parts that have to be fixed for the linotype. We have uh, the keyboard rod, the vertical rod. This end's broken off, so I have to repair that somehow. I'm getting ready to weld a new bottom onto this rod, so I cut off a little more so the weld joint wouldn't be near the where the part has to slide through a guide. Uh, I have a, this piece cut off square and beveled, and this piece here is just a piece of mild sheet steel. I was getting ready to weld them together, but in the process of cutting off the rod, I determined that it's actually hardened steel. And this bottom piece is just mild steel and it won't harden up, so I may have to get some different metal to weld on there. To make sure I can harden the end of this rod when I'm done, I actually have a piece of O1 tool steel here, a sixteenth of an inch thick. So I'll just weld those together. I'll try not to use any welding rod because the welding rod will make a soft spot. A uh, low carbon spot that will be a bit soft in, in the push rod. The first welding try didn't work so well. It sort of necked in where the joint was. So I'm going to try this design where there's a little more metal. So even if it does neck in, it'll still be outside the overall shape. After about three tries, I finally have a satisfactory weld here. Uh, I've cut most of the extra width off using my metal cutting bandsaw, but now I've hit the hard spot from the heat treatment. I can't really seem to anneal that out, so I'm going to have to use the uh, abrasive wheel on my Dremel to finish those cuts. And here's the repaired rod with its neighbor. After I've hardened it and tempered it and polished it, I also put this little bend in the end because they sort of sweep to one side as they rise from the, uh, from the keyboard up to the escapement. So they all have different little bends here so that the ends are parallel to the escapement and to the uh, keyboard slots. So tomorrow I get to try, out, try it out and see if it works. My weld is not perfect, but I think it'll do.